All right, welcome back. Uh, quick little news of the day video here. This is gonna be my first of two videos today as there has been so much going on in the past 24 hours that I wasn't even able to include everything that's happened on this board. So everything you don't see on this board that has happened today that you may have heard about, just know that it's gonna be on my board coming later today, which I'm gonna be waiting to fill out until we get some news potentially from OG or Evil Geniuses. Uh, we're still waiting on some roster announcements from them, especially after OG announced uh, what they did this morning, which I'll eventually get into. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to be sticking to pretty much just two regions, that being Western Europe and Southeast Asia. I wanted to keep all of those kind of grouped together, as well as one story coming up from CIS, aka Eastern Europe. Um, so jumping into it, starting off with Nigma Galaxy, who of course uh, combined with Galaxy Racer out in Southeast Asia, they announced their Southeast Asian roster that's going to be participating in that lower division earlier on this month. And now they've gone out and confirmed that they are sticking with the same roster, including their coach Roman, for this upcoming DBC season. Uh, which really didn't strike me as surprising at all. This is really a team that has stuck together for such a long time. I mean, this is the same stack of players that's been playing together since before TI7, with the exclusion of Matumba Men, of course. Uh, the same four players, those being GH, Mind Control, Miracle, and Kuroki. So, uh, no real supplies. I think it's just a matter of how long it takes for them to really gel as a team. Getting ILTW up to that Tier 1 player status. He's a player that's been hopping around from team to team, never really having the most success. And I think once he is up to that tier one level uh, team nigma is going to be one of the best teams in all of dota i mean they had very very good showings at the animator and at the in their own qualifiers however it just didn't quite pan out for them so i think the sooner that iltw gets up to that tier one status uh the scarier this team's going to look so uh, best of luck to them that it all works out and uh yeah this western european region is uh it's a very scary region again we don't know what og is going to look like right now but it's a tough region um, and continuing on with Western Europe, Heen is going to be continuing to coach for Team Secret. This again, not really coming as a surprise, just something that Team Secret confirmed earlier today. Uh, Heen is a coach that has been around the team for such a long time. He, of course, won TI with Team Liquid back at TI7, the stack I was just talking about. And uh, yeah, so glad to see that Heen is sticking around for this new, incredibly scary looking Team Secret roster. Uh, next up, uh, this is coming from OG. Of course, the past few days we've been seeing uh, the members of OG slowly dwindle away, you know, some of the older members that were there for their TI8 and TI9 run, notably Seb, uh, talking about how he's going to be retiring. Yesterday we had Thompson coming on saying that he was going to take a break for this season to spend more time with his family, feeling a little bit of burnout, and we got that from No Tail today. Uh, with No Tail, I had admittedly mentioned that it was kind of 50-50 whether or not I saw him taking a break or retiring like he did, or whether or not he was going to be continuing with a brand new stack, because that does seem like something that No Tail would do, but it does look like he's going to be taking a break. However, he is going to be living in the same uh, team house as the new OG roster, and he's going to be their mentor. That's what he said. So although he isn't competing, he's going to be an active part of this new OG roster that they have yet to announce to this point. So uh, best of luck to No Tail. Hopefully he has some good time off. It is well deserved after a near decade of competing and some crazy accomplishments too. This guy has won numerous majors, numerous TIs, He's got an insane amount of titles under his belt. So this is a well-deserved break for him, and I hope that it works out for them. And I'm hoping that this new mentorship that he's taking on uh, ends up working out for this new OG roster, and they can be just as scary as the previous ones. Um, now, jumping over quickly to CIS for a quick little story here. Virtus Pro has come out that they've actually t acquired Yamich to play position four. A few weeks ago, we saw Virtus Pro was going to be trying out a new Pause 1 and Pause 4 uh, to present, uh, potentially swap out Nightfall and save. And after a few weeks ago, or I think it's been a week now, announcing that they're going to be having Pure playing carry for them and putting Nightfall in the inactive roster, they have actually come out today and confirmed as well that they're going to be moving save to the inactive roster. So two insanely talented players that made it to top six at TI this year have been benched. Um, it's entirely possible that they maybe get moved to a new team, new region, something like that. I know a lot of people have been speculating that Nightfall moves to North America, so we'll have to see how that goes. But for now, uh, yeah, pretty surprising news coming out from Virtus Pro, and we'll have to see what those two inactive players end up doing. Maybe they stick around for a little while, and if the season doesn't go well for Virtus Pro, maybe they sub them back in. I guess we'll have to find out. And now, uh, moving into Southeast Asia for the rest of the video, these last three topics being around there. Uh, starting off with Honeywell and UK being kicked or leaving from OB Neon. Of course, OB Neon, at the start of November, so like two and a half weeks ago, had announced that they had a new roster. UK was going to be their new position five. Honeywell was being moved to uh, the inactive roster. And then just a few days ago, after only being on the team for two weeks, UK was being moved to the inactive roster as well. So all of a sudden they had two position five players on the inactive roster. And now 
from UK's perspective, it looks like he's been kicked considering he's only been on the team for less than three weeks. And Honeywell has got a new offer, which segues me perfectly into the new Fnatic roster. Uh, most of which is still the same. They've man managed to maintain three of their five players and their coach as well, Sunbi. I don't have it on the board, but Sunbi is returning to coach for Fnatic as well. He's been around for quite a long time. Um, their old roster, of course, consisted of Raven playing position one. We had Schwan and Death playing position two and three. And then we had Jabs and DJ playing position four and five. Their new roster with some roster uh, with some position changes for some of the members that stayed. Raven is still playing position one. They brought in Armel to play position two, which I think is huge. Armel, obviously one of the best mid laners of his region of the world, I would say. We have Jabs and DJ both changing positions. So of course, Jabs was position four last season. Now he's going to be moving to the off lane. And DJ moving back to the position four role, which I think suits him a lot better, in my opinion. And then, they, yeah, like I mentioned, they brought in Hanuel from OB Neon's inactive roster to play position five for them. So, yeah, OB Neon went from having two position fives on the inactive roster to all of a sudden having none. So they've got a hole to fill quite quickly as they're in the upper division. They need to get themselves a top tier position five player and potentially a captain at this point uh, to make sure that they have a decent enough season to not get relegated to the lower division. And finally, ending things off, we have SMG, who have finally filled the hole that KP left when uh, the team and him parted ways. Not to put blame on KP in any way, I think it was a mutual agreement that the two teams would be splitting up, as they did back in S September now, so it's been quite a while. But they have finally acquired a new player, and that's going to be Raging Potato. Team SMG, of course, a team that finished top two in the lower division of SEA last season. Uh, so they're going to be upper division bound, so I'm sure Raging Potato is going to be super hyped about that. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a good looking roster. I'm really excited to see how this region goes. There's been a pretty big shakeup in Southeast Asia. Some teams that have managed to maintain their rosters, some that have been shuffled completely. And I think it's going to be one of their most competitive seasons to date. So uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been the news of the day. Again, there's going to be another video with some of the stories that I wasn't able to fit on this board later today. And so if you don't want to miss that, feel free to subscribe. And I will talk to you guys later with another video.